الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده على من لا نبي بعده ولا أمة بعد أمته ولا كتاب بعد كتابه ولا شريعة بعد شريعته أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما جعلنا لبشر من قبلك الخلد أفإن مت فهم الخالدون صدق الله العظيم Respected viewers, welcome back to our program, Daughters of Islam. And we are speaking about Hazrat Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha. In fact, today is a sixth program on Hazrat Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha. May Allah ta'ala accept our feeble efforts. And may Allah ta'ala give us the ability to follow and emulate the love and the effort and the sacrifice and the tremendous life and achievements of the daughter of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha. After speaking about the virtue and the love of Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, love with justice in our last program, now we come to the situation where towards the end of our beloved Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life. You know, we can imagine that because of the love that Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala had for our beloved Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the love was so much that when Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became sick, it was a very, very difficult time for Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala. Firstly, when she came, when our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa became ill. Then when Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala came to visit, obviously the first thing that was there, you know, that the normal getting up in her honor, kissing her was not there. I related the incident of Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha who said that Hazrat Fatima came to visit Nabi Karim Sallallahu when he was ill. And I could not mistake her walk when she was coming. Mashiyata, Mashiyata Abiha. Her walking was the way the, the walking of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu So when she came and Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so ill and because of pain he could not, you know, get up to kiss her the way normally he used to do and place her next to her. She was very, very hurt. And of course, the pain that she went through. And then one day she came, she said, Wa karba aba. Oh, the difficulty of my father, the pain of my father. And Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala was a woman who had great amount of compassion for the family members. In fact, when Hazrat Jafar radiallahu ta'ala who passed away, and Hazrat Jafar radiallahu ta'ala we all know was, you know, very close to Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala Hazrat Jafar was the brother-in-law, you know, and in that particular way, you know, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala, who's brother, and then when he passed away, uh, she said, Wa amma, oh my, oh my, you know, she, she made mention and she was very, very sad. And that particular time, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa consoled her. You know, so in this way, uh, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala used to feel things very greatly. So when Nabi Karim sallallahu was in that pain, she came and said, Wa karba aba. Oh, the pain of my father. Oh, the pain of my father. I can't see this. So Nabi Karim sallallahu reassured her and said, Oh, my daughter, don't become, don't become overwhelmed. There will be no pain upon your father after this, this episode. And then, you know, Nabi Karim sallallahu then whispered something in her ear. She cried. Then he whispered something in her ear and she laughed. And then afterwards, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala wanted to know what did Nabi Karim sallallahu say because of which Hazrat Fatima reacted firstly by crying and then smiling. Then Hazrat Fatima said, that is a secret of my father. I can't make mention of it at this time. It was there after, after the death of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that at that time, that Hazrat Aisha asked and then she revealed it. And we are fortunate that because of this conversation, we came to know what actually transpired. And what did Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell her? So Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told, and Hazrat Fatima revealed to Hazrat Aisha, he said the first time, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, oh my daughter, I'm gonna leave this world. There are already signs with regard to it. And she also mentioned that Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Every year, Hazrat Jibreel come and do one khatam of the Holy Quran with me in Ramadan. This year, he made two khatams. And I'm not going to survive this illness. I'm going to leave this world. So obviously, being the daughter and given the love, I started crying. And then 
he brought me close to her, close to him. And then he said, oh, my daughter, after I pass away, you would be the first one from amongst my family to come and join me after my death. So I smiled. Can you imagine? Viewers, can you imagine this? When someone comes and tells you that you are going to die very soon after I pass away, normally we, in our situation, irrespective of how close we are to the marhum, you know, we will, we will not become happy that if someone tells you, I'm going to die, you're going to come after me after two, three months, we won't be happy. But look at Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, the love that she said that I'm going to, you know, she started smiling because of the fact that she's going to join Nabi Karim Sallallahu after his death. And in that particular way, when our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu passed on, it was a very, very difficult day for Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, something in which she has expressed her feelings in certain poems. Subhanallah. Look at this poem. Mada ala man shamma turbata ahmadi. In fact, she even told Anas bin Malik, Anas, how did you find it to pour the sand and to throw sand in over the qabr and over the body of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How did you find it? And then she said that, Yimada ala man shamma turbata ahmada, Allah ya shummu madaz zamana gawaliya, subbat alayya masaibun law annaha, subbat ala al ayyami sirna layaliya. That such great difficulty had come upon me that what what joy can they be in sniffing the fragrance of even the most best of fragrance, whether it be mushk, whether it be oud, whether it be any beautiful type of fragrance. What joy can they be with regard to smelling the fragrance of a great and a most beautiful fragrance, a most beautiful itar, a most beautiful perfume after you have smelled and you have taken into your nose and into your nostrils the the smelling and you have taken into it the sand that had come over the body of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subbat alayya masaibun law annaha subbat ala al-ayyami sirna layaliya such great difficulty had come upon me and pain had come upon me after the death of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if that pain and difficulty had come upon a bright day the bright day because of the difficulty would turn into night you know, what, what great feelings there was. And in one particular poem, which is also attributed to Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she had made mention, Inna faqadnaka faqda al-arda wa balaha wa ghaba mudh ghibta anna al-wahyu wal-kutub falayta qablaka kana al-mawtu sadafana lamma yaghibu wa halad dunaka al-kutub When you parted from us, the earth lost its beauty. The earth lost its lushness. What beauty can you find in the earth? After you have passed on, O oh my beloved father, O oh beloved Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with your parting, the chain of revelation has ceased. After your parting away, there is no wahi that comes directly from Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon anyone in the earth. If only death has come to us before you, before you were concealed with sand. Subhanallah, these were the sayings and the feelings of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha after the passing away of our beloved Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ulama have written that Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha did not smile after the death of her beloved father. She was constantly in a state of mourning, in a state of, you know, great amount of sadness because of this. You know, there is one, you know, in a way, our ulama have also made mention, and this has been made mention by many ulama, that in a way, her, her passing away, her death, was because of the separation from our beloved Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in a way they said she was a matter of love for our beloved Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the truth. In it was Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Also it is said, Hali smiled after the death of our beloved Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course we can never, we from here, we can never imagine the love People like Hazrat Fatima, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, had for our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She hardly ever smiled after that. And there was one incident that happened, which I think we just very briefly have to go into the details with regard to it. And that was after our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, 
Hazrat Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala came to Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala. Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala had become the Khalifa and there is no doubt whatsoever he was the true Khalifa. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given many types of indication. Iktaru bil ladhina min ba'di Abu Bakr wa Umar. After I've gone, follow Abu Bakr and Umar. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made him the Imam. And Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made him the Imam of Salat for 17 Salats. When Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive, in one of those 17 Salat, one day, Abu Bakr was ill. I mean, and Nabi, Abu Bakr came late. And Umar was about to lead the prayer when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa heard and said, no, no, no one can lead the prayer other than Abu Bakr. The Um Allah and his Rasul and the Ummah will not accept anyone as the Imam other than Abu Bakr. There is no doubt that he was the Khalifa. So uh, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, at that particular time, she came with regard to in the latter stages. And now we have to keep this also in mind that there was no doubt, and there are so many examples we gave with regard to Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, the blisters on her hand, the aspects of not having clothes, the example, you know, proper clothes, the example when Imran ibn Hussein went with Nabi Karim Sallallahu to visit Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, knocked on the door, who is it? It's your father. Ya Rasulullah, who is with you? Imran ibn Hussein. Ya Ras oh my father, I don't have enough clothes to cover me in front of a stranger like Imran, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam threw that shawl in and Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then gave it and she covered herself and then opened the door. Towards the latter portion, there were certain things that came in the possession of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he shared it. So one was it that initially there was no slaves and servants, but towards the end Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did give her a slave, a, a slave and a servant. And there was, um, there was a property or a land, maybe property might not be the word, we, we, we understand property very different from a land. The land was that there was an agricultural land from Fadak that was in the time of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had used the proceeds of that to give it to the family members. And Hazrat Aish Fatima radiallahu ta'ala went to approach Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala with regard to that. And we will make mention of this after the break. Respected viewers, welcome back to our program. Before the break, we were speaking about Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha after the death of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa And of course, it had a tremendous impact upon her. And of course, in a very short period of time thereafter, she also left this world. In a way, you know, she was slain by love. Love for our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, love for her father. And because of that, she hardly ever smiled after our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu passing away. There was an issue, and that was the land of Fadak, which Nabi Karim Sallallahu had after the conquest of Khaybar. So that land came in the, in the authority of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah in the Holy Quran, in the first verse of the 10 supara wa'lamu anna ma ghanimtum min shay'in fa anna lillahi khumusa wa li rasul wa li dhil qurba wal yatama wal masakin wa ibn sabil so there was a one fifth that was given in the discretion of our beloved nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam took the proceeds of that land the agricultural proceeds of that land and distributed it amongst the family of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat fatima radiyallahu anha went to abu bakr radiyallahu anhu and said that that particular land it is part of inheritance. So it is part of inheritance, we must get a share of that. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu had heard the saying of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu that we Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam la nurithu dirhamu wa la dinaran, we do not leave any inheritance of wealth. Whatever we leave behind is sadaqah. Whatever we leave behind is charity for the poor and for those people who are deserving. So there is no inheritance from the estate and the wealth of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as it is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hardly had anything much, but there was this whole particular land that Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had kept, but it was not inheritance, it was not in the possession, but the proceeds was used in a particular way. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala explained this, that listen, we will keep the proceeds to go in the same way as it was done in the time of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there is no inheritance. 
There is no, and this is such a great wisdom. So as I've said even previously, there is such a great difference between the Nabi of Allah and a worldly king. A worldly king looks at things only materially. Whereas the Nabi of Allah looks at things from the spiritual perspective and the akhirat, not worried with regard to material gains. And that is why throughout the life of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu whenever there was sacrifice required, Nabi Karim Sallallahu put himself first. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu put his family first to make sacrifice. Whenever there was material gains, Nabi Karim Sallallahu kept it away from the family. Nabi Karim Sallallahu family is not allowed to have zakat. They cannot take the zakat. They can only take hadiyah. They can only take gifts. So whenever there was material gain, Nabi Sallallahu kept the family away. Wherever there was effort and sacrifice, as I gave many examples, Nabi Karim Sallallahu put his family. So in this way also, there was great wisdom that the Nabi of Allah did not leave inheritance. And this was something that when Abu Bakr explained to us at Fatima, she initially was, you know, maybe had certain feelings, but then afterwards she accepted when she saw the wisdom. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala also used to say with regard to the same thing, that I, in the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made me the trustee of Fadak to distribute the proceeds, not the, the possession of the land. To distribute the proceeds, I was made the trustee. I used to distribute the proceeds with Nabi Karim Sallallahu permission and Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi used to tell me where to do it. And I was still the trustee in the time of Abu Bakr, in the time of Omar, until I became the Khalifa, I used to distribute it the same way. And this particular claim, Aliyadu Billah, Aliyadu Billah, may Allah Ta'ala forbid, and may Allah Ta'ala protect us from such a fitna, may Allah Ta'ala protect us from such a view, that Aliyadu Billah, after this, that there was such a great amount of bitterness between Abu Bakr and Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, there is not a shred of truth in it. There is not an atom of truth in it. Hazrat Abu Bakr, when he, when he said and he explained this, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala accepted it. And if you look at the life of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, in the life of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa she went through such amount of difficulty and poverty. I narrated an incident that on one occasion when Ali radiallahu ta'ala brought a dirham or a dinar, you know, after great amount of days of hunger, and she had to cook something because of her weakness. Her forehead was hitting the grinding mill with which she was cooking because of weakness, because they had not eaten for so many days. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi one day sent something to her before he ate, when he was invited or he was having meals at someone. Go and give it to Fatima, she hasn't eaten for three days. Two viewers, do you ever feel that that woman would fight for inheritance? That woman would fight for wealth after such a great amount of poverty and sacrifice she made for the deen. It is absolutely, there is not a shred of evidence, an atom of truth in this, that Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala was angry with Abu Bakr because of this. And another thing, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala used to do the same thing in his khilafat. He didn't even take the, that fadak and give it over to Hazrat Fatima or to the family of, of Fatima, Hazrat Hassan and Hussein. He also did the same thing, which Abu Bakr did. So we must be very careful with regard to what we read and sometimes propaganda that is made. Then on one occasion, because of this fact that some people were spreading this rumor, Hazrat Abu Bakr went to Hazrat Fatima with Umar and said, O daughter of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are so valuable to us. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi said, our Iman is not complete until, until you and I, and you know, we have more love for you and the family of Nabi Karim Sallallahu than what we have for our own family. You are more valuable to me. You are more beloved to me. I have more love for you than my own family. And then Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala was very pleased with this. And to show you that there was no enmity and hostility, as we said, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala passed away very soon after our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu when she became ill, who was there to nurse Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala? It was none other than Asma binti Umais. Who is Asma binti Umais? Asma binti Umais is the wife of Abu Bakr. 
So if there was any type of enmity or hostility, would the wife of Abu Bakr be amongst those who had nursed and cared for Hazrat Fatima in her illness? You know, so this aspect, Hazrat Asma bin Tumais was amongst those who cared for Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha in her illness. And one day, when Hazrat, while they were, she was ill, you know, uh, one of the things that she had made mention, she said to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala, she made a wasiyat after I passed away, then get married to Umama, my niece, the daughter of Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. Huh? So in this way, after she had passed on, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala got married to Hazrat Umama, the niece of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, the sister's daughter. And, and then she was one day speaking to Asma binti Umais and said, I'm so worried because one of the things that she was so worried because she was so modest and so chaste, so pure. And she said, the one thing that I'm so greatly concerned is that when people will see my janaza, never mind seeing me in real life, then people will see my janaza. I don't want people even to see my janaza. So Asma binti Umais, who had migrated to Abyssinia, she narrated to Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha that uh, in Abyssinia, this is the way they bury. They put uh, the, the body and they place an outer garment, you know, over the body. So Asma, uh, Hazrat Fatima became so happy when she heard this from Asma. She said, I want to be buried in the same way. I don't want anyone to even see the shape and to see my body after I pass away. Bury me in such a way. Cover me over, over, over my body. There must be a garment. And that is a sunnah of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala. So in this way, when Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala became very ill, Asma binti Umais radiallahu ta'ala looked after and cared for Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala until the time came, which no one can ever escape. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Each and every soul will have to taste death. Each and every soul will have to get death. So she had made a wasiyat to Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala take my janaza during the night. Take my janaza during the night so that people will not be able to see my body and the cover of the night would conceal me because of my modesty and because of being chaste. She was after all Fatima Zahra, the resplendent, but she was also Batul. So in this way, that time came when Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala passed away. And then after Isha, Hazrat Ali, Ali radiallahu ta'ala had called people, Hazrat Umar and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala had come. And according to the riwayat of Ja'far bin Muhammad, or Muhammad bin Ja'far, I think it was Muhammad, the son of Ja'far, uh, he narrated and said, Ali radiallahu ta'ala was there. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala told Abu Bakr, you perform the janazah. And Abu Bakr said, no, you must perform the janazah. And then Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, no way. I will not be able to move ahead when you are the Khalifa, when Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi made you the Imam. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala performed the janazah of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala. There are different riwayats with regard to where she is buried. One riwayat said Jannatul Baqi. One riwayat said not very far from where our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi is buried. Allah ta'ala knows with regard to that because it was after Isha and in that concealment that her body was taken. And this great, great woman, the daughter of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the queen of the, all the women in Jannah, the one who was so close to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed on, may Allah Ta'ala elevate her status. May Allah Ta'ala give her a rank even more than what you and I can imagine. We make dua for that not because of her greatness, because of the elevation of her status, but for our, for our own benefit. So when we talk about it, may Allah Ta'ala elevate our status. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala was asked about our beloved, about Hazrat Fatima after she had passed on and with which I will conclude. He says, what was Fatima radiallahu ta'ala? And he replied, she was the most beautiful fragrant flower who had left her fragrance and her fragrance still emits after her passing away. That was Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala elevate her status and may Allah ta'ala give us the ability to be able to emulate in a small way her achievements and her sacrifice. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا لِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ